This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. This week's watch is from my favourite watchmaker, my favourite brand, Patek Philippe. It's a new look, it's a new complication, and it's a steel watch, which of course makes it much harder to get hold of. I've waited just over a year for this one to arrive, but I'm so excited that it's here at the channel and I can show it to you in detail. This week's watch, my friend, is the Patek Philippe Calatrava Weekly Calendar. Yes, that's right, folks. This week's watch is the Patek Philippe Calatrava Weekly Calendar. This little beauty right here. This has got an entirely new movement, the 26330, and that is to cope with the very unusual five hand setup for the weekly calendar aspect of this watch. But of course, the new movement is only part of the story. This is something new for Patek, and it was launched in 2019 at Basel World. Initially, I wasn't that excited about it, but I soon came around and I've been waiting over a year for this little baby to arrive. I personally thought it was gonna be very easy to get hold of. Oh, how wrong I was. Before we get started, a quick wristwatch check and under the brown jumper is one of my favorite Japanese watches. It is the Grand Seiko Snowflake, the SBGA211. As many of you will know if you've watched my Grand Seiko collection episode, I imported this from Japan personally because at the time you could not get them in the UK. It's a 41 millimeter titanium watch with one of the most sublime, beautiful dials that you will find anywhere on any watch ever. But because it's titanium, it's very light and therefore you can wear it all the time and not even notice you've got something on. It's the perfect everyday watch. And of course, also because of the spring drive, it's stupendously accurate. So let me tell you about the new Calatrava weekly calendar. This is reference 5212A. So what I'm gonna do is explain all aspects and functionality of this watch. I'm gonna take you through its place in the range and I'm gonna take you through the unboxing, why I love it and also the buying story. So if that sounds like your particular brand of vodka, let's get on with it. This is a 40 millimeter steel cased watch. And for those of you that know, steel watches in terms of production at Patek is very much in the minority. Steel watches are therefore the hardest to get hold of and the rarest variants at Patek. It's an ingenious, classic, beautiful looking watch that sits in the complication range at Patek. And it was very much on my want list. The DNA of this watch can be traced back to the 2512 Patek, which was a one-off piece from 1955, which you can now find in the Patek Museum. The dolphin hands and the rail on the outer edge of the dial form the basis of the design for this new 5212. I mean, just look at that silver opaline dial and those blackened gold hour markers and hands. The elegant structure of all the elements on the dial make this a real showstopper. And of course, there's the handwritten appearance of all the lettering on the dial, but more of that later. The five hand complication shows the seconds, hours and minutes, day and the annual week number. The date is shown in a separate window. The months are written around the outside. Now remember, not every year has exactly 52 weeks in it. Some of them are 53. So this watch isn't infallible. There will be some adjustment over the years. And it's also true that the week's hand may not always show the correct month, but those are rare exceptions and they in no way compromise the usability of this timepiece. Now this is a self-winding watch, which makes it very simple to use and it's easy to wear on a daily basis. It's also got a really nice calfskin strap, which to begin with is quite hard and unyielding, but over time will gradually become more supple and a lot more comfortable. And the exposed case back gives you a good view of that new movement. And of course, being a steel watch, you don't feel too cheated that you're missing out on precious metals here instead of the sapphire crystal. And of course, being steel and a Calatrava, it's very light, very much like the 6007, the limited edition one that I did an episode on earlier in the year. So it's a very light, very usable, very elegant looking watch. Now I should point out this is not a limited edition. However, they don't make that many. So hence why they are so 
difficult to get hold of. To adjust this watch, you've obviously got the crown at the three o'clock position. On the innermost position is for winding the watch. You then pull it out to position one in order to change the date and position two to change the hour and minute hands. If you then want to change the position of the hammer for the day. You use the supplied tool to press one of the buttons here on the side of the case on the left, and then you press the other button to change the weak indicator. So it's a relatively simple to set watch. It is a five hand setup, but you'd be amazed with five hands and all that writing, it doesn't look like a cluttered dial at all. How they've done that, I just don't know. I guess that's the genius of watch design. So why is this interesting and why was I keen to have it in the collection? Well of course it's all about this beautiful dial. It is one of the most stunning watches in the current Patek range but it's those handwritten numbers and words on here that really gives this watch a, a whole different feel. It's such a breathtaking dial that oozes old charm and sophistication. The font is actually based on the actual handwriting of one of the designers at Patek Philippe. And this means it's utterly unique and so much more human. From the press photos, I thought this was a sort of ivory colored dial, but it's not, it's actually silver. And that with the black polished hour markers and hands. It just looks so sophisticated. And the markings have the look of a faint handwritten ink pen. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And those red tipped hammer hands for the weeks and the days, so, so classy. Coming from a publishing background, I can fully understand the weekly calendar functionality because in monthly magazine publishing, you tend to work in four weekly chunks. It's also interesting to note that Monday is set as the first day of the week, which I think is entirely appropriate. None of this Sunday business. What's also good is that it has a fail safe function. So you don't have to be as careful about how and when you set the time and all the functions on this watch. You don't have to worry about it breaking like you do with other complications. You can make corrections at any time without potentially hurting the movement. When you've got five hands to worry about, that's a big relief. You've got to hold one of these in your hands to appreciate the subtlety and the beauty of the dial and of the color of the dial as well and the way that it sits so perfectly with the brown leather strap. Now it doesn't have a deployment clasp, which is what I usually prefer. I'm not a big fan of the standard buckle and I always feel that it puts too much pressure on the leather and on the pins as well. I felt the same way about the 6007 and I feel it about this. So now it's time to go into Unboxo Vision and let's go through and open the packaging of this new weekly calendar. Now, no surprise, it of course features exactly the same box as every other Patek that I own and that you would have seen on this channel. And there we have the trademark Patek Philippe brown dust cover, which covers the main box itself, which has some silver Patek writing on it. And underneath, you've got a lovely leather brown Patek Philippe wallet and this is where it keeps all your vital documentation. So you've got the certificate of origin which has got all the specific details of your watch and also your details. You then have a brochure for the Patek Philippe Museum which I heartily recommend you go to if you can get to Geneva and you also have a booklet called the Collector's Library which advertises many Patek books. Over on the other side of the wallet you have the full manual for the weekly calendar which does it in detail in many different languages and you also have the sales tag as well. Then you get to the box itself and you pull off the dust cover and inside is that polished walnut watch box, again engraved with the Calatrava cross and you open the clasp, there it is, there's the weekly calendar sat on its beautiful beige pillow and in this case because you need to adjust some of the functionality of the watch using the buttons on the side of the case they also give you the little tool to make that adjustment. So there you go, classic Patek, but you'd expect no less. So what's the buying story of this Calatrava weekly calendar? Well, no surprise, it's part of my long-standing relationship that I built up with Francis in Bournemouth. When the watch was launched at Basel World in 2019, I have to confess, I didn't jump on it straight away. It wasn't like so incredible that I had to have it immediately. This was a bit more of a grower. The more I looked at it, the more I studied it, the more I learned about the handwritten dial and the fact it was based on a real person, 
I just started to seduce me on a deep level. And in the end, I finally made the call and added it to the watches that I was hoping to get in the future. And I didn't appreciate at the time just how rare these watches are. I thought, okay, it's a Calatrava, it's steel, fair enough, but it would be one of the easier to get models, just like many of the other Calatravas. No, no, it is not. Because it's steel and Patek don't make that many steel watches, this is actually pretty hard to get hold of and therefore very highly sought after. I had no idea. I thought I would get it within about two months, but it's taken well over a year and apparently there are many people who haven't had theirs yet. So I do apologize if I'm rubbing your nose in it by featuring it here, but hopefully this will whet your appetite even further for when it does arrive. To be honest, the reason why I probably got this watch so quickly compared to others is most likely down to my purchasing history with Patek and the fact that I've got grand complications. So I'm under no illusion that perhaps that might have allowed me to get this a little bit quicker. But I have to say, I'm really, really pleased with this. It is so much nicer in the hand and in real life than it looks in the pictures. But what do you think of this watch? Leave comments below. Thank you very much for watching this episode on the Patek Philippe Calatrava Weekly Calendar. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it useful. If you like what I'm doing on thewatchguys.tv, please subscribe, we've just hit 10,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for that, but we wanna get bigger and better. And if you like what we're doing, please subscribe, leave comments and likes on all the videos that you watch, and there'll be another Watch Guys episode along next week.